Um, first of all, what is value investing? When you see this uh, phrase banded about an awful lot, um, it's about buying a stock below its intrinsic value. What's the intrinsic value of a business, which most people would say uh, it amounts to the discounted present value of its future expected cash flows in some form. Well, how much cash will it generate over its over a horizon and discounting that back to uh, present value is roughly it. The kind of the, the father of, uh, of value investment is Ben Graham. Uh, he was the author of uh, Security Analysis and the Intelligent Investor and famously taught uh, Warren Buffett in his time at Columbia University. And of course, his pupil, Warren Buffett, who uh, certainly in his early years of running Berkshire Hathaway, was an adherent of value investing, of, of trying primarily to buy a stock below its, uh, its intrinsic worth. Um, it's, in my view, become incorrectly associated in more recent years by other practitioners with the simplicity of just buying things which are lowly rated, that people look at simply the low valuation. They don't do the bit about looking at the valuation versus the intrinsic value because of course something can be lowly valued but not lowly valued enough if it's a poor business um, this kind of illustrates that point i think this is an interesting chart in my view it takes uh, a number of stocks uh, all of the sort that we seek to invest in at fundsmith so uh, things like consumer staple stocks in particular you see heavily represented here some consumer discretionary stocks and it looks at the pe you could have paid if you bought these stocks at the beginning of 1973 and held them through to 2019, so a pretty long period, a period with uh, inflation and then deflation, uh, with a number of recessions and crises of various sorts, so a pretty long sweep of investment history. And it says, during that period, the MSCI World Index delivered a return of 6.2% per annum. And what we've got here is somebody who's gone back and computed what PE or price earnings ratio you could have paid for some of these stocks and beaten that index. What could you have paid and got a 7% compound annual growth rate in the value of your investment? So you can see that at the top of the chart, 7% CAGR. And you can see in 1973, you could have paid 281 times L'Oreal's earnings that year and still beaten the index over the period down to 2019. Uh, you could have paid 126 times for Colgate and you could have paid 100 times for PepsiCo. Um, and you see, the people who really adhere to value investing as equally low as equally low valuation miss the point that presumably, looking back at this now, uh, buying L'Oreal at less than 281 times earnings, you were buying it below what seems to have been established as its intrinsic value. That is an extremely important point, which I think we are generally bad uh, at managing to figure out. Um, Having said what value investing is, what's quality investing, which um, we at Fundsmith endeavour to apply? We're looking for companies with a high return on capital. This, I, I think, is the primary measure of financial performance by a company. Does it make a high return on the capital employed, which after all is a shareholder you partially own? You also need to look for a source of growth. There's no good having high returns if you don't have anything to invest in in the future, because most companies distribute about half of their earnings, the other half that they retain is reinvested in the business in some form uh, in this source of growth and that delivers incremental returns over the future it is the source of compounding which is the single uh, characteristic of equities which in my view is not commented on enough equities are a unique asset class unlike any other asset class a portion of the return for the investor the cash flows of the earnings is retained by the company and reinvested on your behalf that doesn't happen in real estate it doesn't happen in bonds and also, fundamentally, we're looking for companies with a sustainable competitive advantage. This is the famous Warren Buffett moat. It's no good having great returns uh, if you aren't able to fend off the competition, because otherwise the competition will enter your uh, market and drive your returns down towards uh, the average or even possibly below. So that's what we are seeking when we talk about um, quality investing. Um, Buffett himself made a transition. He started as a, a value investor, uh, as a disciple of Ben Graham, but people often forget that he was also taught at Columbia University by a man called Philip Fisher, who wrote a book called Common Stocks and Uncommon Profits. And Philip Fisher was really a disciple of the quality investing in the, in the sense I've described it, looking for companies with high returns and a source of growth in which to reinvest to compound in value. He was also very affected by Charlie Munger, the vice chairman of, uh, of Berkshire, uh, who I think has got more of a bent towards quality investing than value investing, uh, which you'll see in some of the quotes I'm going to give you. 
Um, Buffett himself agrees with us, I think, on the primary measure of, of what's a quality business, a high return on capital. Here's a quote from his 1979 annual report to investors uh, in Berkshire Hathaway. You see, he says, the primary test of managerial economic performance is the achievement of high earnings rate on equity capital employed, a high return on equity capital employed. This is, in his view, the primary measure of performance. Now, since he wrote that in 1979, it's been almost universally ignored by the investment uh, industry. Uh, I always uh, say I have a blind bet with people who are the uh, recipients of investment research about companies. Uh, and if they pick out 10 random pieces of research, how many of them, those 10, will say that the thing that we should most look at in this company that's being analyzed is the return on capital? I'll bet you that none of them say that. I'll have a blind bet of the sort of statutory view. I don't know five euros with anyone watching this there. On the other hand, when they've lost that bet to me, and I think they will lose it, I'll give them what they call a double or quits opportunity. I'll bet you that all 10 of them mention earnings per share. You'll see that Buffett's quote goes on to say, the primary test is not the achievement of consistent gains in earnings per share, which people, of course, uh, obsess about, uh, whereas they don't give much consideration to the return on capital employed. Um, here's a, another quote. This one is from Munger, who, as I say, really... Uh, drove Buffett, I think, or helped to drive Buffett towards quality investment. Over the long term, it's hard for a stock to earn a much better return than the business which underlies it earns. I don't know why he picked this period or these numbers, but he says, if the business earns 6% of capital over 40 years, and you hold it for that 40 years, you're not going to make much different than 6% return. And this is the punchline, even if you originally buy it at a huge discount, so if you're buying it as a value investment. Conversely, if a business earns 18% on capital over 20 or 30 years, even if you pay an expensive looking price, you'll end up with one hell of a result. He's saying, look at the quality of the returns in the business, not at the price. Here's an illustration of why Munger is right. 